she is currently a board member of the Philippine Society of Gastroenterology. Head, Committee on Training Progress and Residency at Asian Hospital. Studied medicine at UST Faculty of Different GI Diseases. Our speaker, Dr. Mary Hospital. She is also a fellow of the Philippine College of Radiology, Ultrasound Society of the Philippines, and Breast... I will be discussing about an interesting topic requested to me by our friends here in the Department of Gastroenterology, Theory in Black and White. For the general objectives of this lecture, it is how to prescribe imaging and to be able to present the different tests commonly used to investigate the sound. The CD is an example of an image of a normal small and large bowels, with the small bowels having the valvuli conniventis and hellstrom markings for the large bowels. Able we'll to distinguish what is abnormal. When we evaluate a plane abdominal x-ray, we look first into the bowels. Always apply centimeters for small bowel, 6 cm for large bowel, and 9 cm for the cecum. For the bones, we can also assess the ribs, lower thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae, sacrum, coccyx, pelvis, and proximal femurs. These are the different projections that you may indicate in your request for a plain abdominal radiograph. The AB supine view, the PA view, and the cross table lateral view. The AP supine, supine view is as gas fluid level and free gas in the abdominal cavity. The cross table lateral view meanwhile is performed as an alternative to the upright view to assess for free gas in the abdominal cavity. And this is ideal for children or even adults who are unable to move from the supine position for the assessment of bowel perforation. Here are some examples to raise my previous introduction of these views. The AP view, we must look into the bowel gas pattern. Any abdominal calcifications are assessed as soft tissues and abnormal masses. The AP view may add further information if we want to assess. As an approach to abdominal radiography, here are some rules. Minimal amount of gas in the small bowel, small bowels. No gas is seen in this distal to the point of obstruction and solid material muscle appearance is suggestive of feces. Here are some tips on how to interpret a plain abdominal radiograph. A normal radiograph will show air in the rectum around only one to two loops of air in small bowel and air or some feces in large bowel. A radiograph of localized ileus will show air in the rectum about two to three dilated loops of air in the small bowel and air in the colon. The radiograph of generalized ileus will also have air in the rectum, multiple air fluid bowel loops, and air in the colon. The radio bowels and also very minimal absence or absence of colonic gas. The plain abdominal film of a large bowel obstruction will have no air in the rectum small bowels but will show air distended large bowels. In localized ileus, the bowels lose their peristalsis due to focal irritation from the adjacent organ. So we will see persistently the latest small bowel loops. Mm -hmm. Some causes of localized ileus are cholecystitis, pancreatitis, appendicitis, diverticulitis, also, renal cannula, and here are the respective size of the deleted small bowels for each cost. It uses high frequency sound waves, it may also be used for Doppler imaging, no radiation, and therefore safe. We can also acquire real time images of the organs while scanning. Ultrasound uses a cross image email for hypoechoic literature, anything sonorous and lumen here. These are, these are the stones and these are the blood piles. Such. Some effective bugs large are sludge in large quantity. Another disease entity in the gallbladder we may see are cholesterol polyps or cholesterolosis. This results in accumulation of lipids within the macrophages. 
they are usually round around the two millimeters to two millimeters and ultrasound these are all void nine non-shadowing lesions attached in the inner pelvic Ultrasound is currently the most practical and accurate method to diagnose cholecystitis. Here are the ultrasound features of pancreas cholecystitis. There is thickening of the gallbladder wall, extension of the gallbladder lumen, of course, uh, presence of gallstones, and very sometimes pericholecystic fluid. Another biliary duct disease that an ultrasound may see are common bile duct stones. Although these, there are some limitations with this because they are in the bowels, we obscure visualization of the common bile stones. Then ERCP or MRCP may be used in these cases. Majority of the stones will be at the distal common bile duct right at the ampulla of butter. Another organ of interest is the pancreas. The pancreatitis ultrasound may be used to identify peripancreatic fluid collections but it's not useful in detection of the process. The role of ultrasound for pancreatitis is to detect common stones, common bilux, obstruction related to the disease. Mild forms of pancreatitis may reveal normal imaging findings even in MRI. Some sonographic findings that we may see in cases of pancreatitis are heterogeneous parenchyma, decreased gland heterogeneity, an enlarged pancreas, you see here, this is the pancreas, it's an enlarged pancreas with the parenchyma, presence of peripancreatic fluid or pancreatic duct dilatation. Of course, ultrasound is also used in assessments for, for presence of abdominal fluid or situs. Although CT scan may, is most sensitive for small amounts of fluid in the peritoneum. Now we go to a dumbbell CT scan. Computed tomography CT scan or CAT scan shows the cross sectional images of specific X ray, a faster procedure and less expensive than an MRI. This modality may be used to assess abdominal masses, obstruction, inflammatory bowel diseases, infections, aneurysms and a contrast CT uses iodine-based contrast. CT scan is not recommended for pregnant women unless medically necessary. We also have to consider the risk for serious solid reactions to contrast media. However, this is extremely rare. CT scan may not be as sensitive in identifying dull stones as in abdominal ultrasound. Unlike ultrasound, C triple contrast CT requires fasting. It constitutes the administration of oral contrast, intravenous contrast, and rectal contrast. The contrast media we usually use for water soluble iodine based contrast. In CT scan, we can acquire the coronal, axial, and sagittal images of patient tissue. In imaging of the liver, especially for hepatic muscles, we usually do the triphasic CT scan wherein we get the scans highly accurate and cheaper than MRI in the diagnosis of hepatocellular carcinoma. Here are the phases of the triphasic CT scan of the liver, the non enhanced arterial phase, the portal venous phase, and the equilibrium phase. Triphasic CT scan of the liver is useful in the evaluation of hypervascular hepatic lesions like the hemangioma, adenoma, FNH, or buccal nodular hyperplasia, metastasis, and hepatocellular carcinoma. One of the hypervascular hepatic lesions that we will be discussing is the hepatocellular carcinoma, which is the most common primary malignant tumor of the liver. Hepatic carcinoma receives most of its blood supply from the branches of hepatic artery and is characterized by an early arterial enhancement with early washout. Women scan rather than an ultrasound is the pancreas. 
Here are the roles of abdominal CT scan for pancreatitis. It detects pancreatic necrosis, it detects complications of acute pancreatitis, diagnosed and unsuspected acute pancreatitis, diagnosed conditions mimicking acute pancreatitis like gastrointestinal ischemia, ischemia, ulcer, or even ruptured aortic aneurysm. Like the liver, we also have three phase protocol for the pancreas the control or unenhanced acquisition, which allows identification of some causes of acute pancreatitis. The pancreatic parenchymal phase, which is the optimal phase for assessment of necrosis because normal pancreatic tissue enhances greatest during this phase. The portal venous phase, which is useful in identifying some complications. This is the contrast enhanced CT image that we see during the pancreatic parenchymal phase which shows a heterogeneous enhancing pancreas. The pancreatic head appears edematous with associated strandings of the prepancreatic fat and some peripancreatic fluid collections. This is an example image of acute necrotized pancreatitis evaluation. So, in the evaluation of intestines, we may use either the high attenuation contrast agents for opacification of the GI tract or a low attenuation contrast agents like water and air. Here is some patient is are water inside the intestines. One of the topics included to discuss in my lecture was acute mesenteric ischemia. Acute mesenteric ischemia can occur either the superior mesenteric when the superior mesenteric vein or superior mesenteric artery is acutely compromised either due to thrombosis or luminal narrowing. The risk factors include heart disease, hypercut, level states. And why is it important for an early diagnosis? Because it can lead to sepsis, irreversible small bowel damage, and even death. Intervention. Place the mesenteric vessels and conduct a thorough examination of the intestines. A multi-detector CT offers distinct advantages over traditional CT imaging of mesenteric vasculature. Although angiography is considered a standard reference for the diagnosis of mesenteric ischemia, it is an invasive, time-consuming, and mostly costly procedure. A multi-detector row CT provides a faster scanning and improved quality of 3D reformatted images, which in percent and a specificity of 92%. The most common CD findings in acute mesenteric skin are circumferential bowel wall thickening, the halo appearance of the bowel wall, luminal dilatation, mesenteric strandings, hematosis intestinalis or gas within the wall of the bowel. So an example of coronal CT images of acute mesenteric ischemia where we can see segmental bowel wall thickening with some rheumatosis intestinalis, minimal air. CT angiography is highly sensitive indicator indicator of bowel perfusion ischemia, and it can be used to detect mesenteric ischemia, diabetes, and superior mesenteric artery demonstrating normal branching pattern of the SMA. This, the coronal oblique view also shows normal branching of pattern of the inferior mesentery guard. Here are the images showing acute mesentery ischemia. Letters C and D, sorry for the small image, shows coronal sagittal image occlusion of both renal arteries and SMA distal segment. CT angiography, coronal image, shows complete occlusion of the distal SMA and renal arteries. Distal SMA, these are the renal arteries. I will touch on a little on the MRI or magnetic resonance imaging. Basically, I will give examples of some topics and um, ask you when to request or will MRI be beneficial for these example cases? 
A little introduction in MRI, it is to depict that produces tomographic images by means of magnetic fields and radio waves. And most staging certain types of cancer and for MRCB. Although the modality is a bit expensive, the next lecture will be mostly sound will be beneficial for these cases. Some cases that have are, have been already discussed in my slides of the previous imaging modalities. So case number one, a 65-year-old male came in with illus vomiting with no bowel movement in five days. Physical examination revealed abdominal distension, hypoactive bowel sounds, and generalized abdominal pain. Plain abdominal x-ray revealed illus test for an MRI. MRI enterography may be done if you are entertaining inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease, post-operative additions, small bowel malignancies, or polyposis, and as the causes of bowel obstruction. It may provide the first opportunity to detect and characterize tumors of the small bowels. MR enterocalysis should be recommended for the initial images of a carcinoid neoplasm where we can see speaking. The bottom image will show a small hypervascular nodule, the wall of small bowel, and a coronal contrast image of T1 weighted image. I will not dwell much into discussing on how to describe each findings in MRI. My topic is the right upper abdominal quadrant pain, which radiates to the tip of the right scapula after eating fat foods. Ultrasound of the hepatobiliary tree revealed multiple gallstones, but on follow-up, the patient is having right upper abdominal quadrant tenderness and icteritia. When would you request for an MRI? So MRCP or magnetic resonance cholangiography is able to achieve similar sensitivity about 90 to 94 percent as the ERCP or your endoscopic retrograde cholangiography for the diagnosis of cholangiopolithiasis. However, if the diagnosis of common bilateral stone has already been secured by your ultrasound or a CT scan, then there is therapeutic ERCP. MRCP produces detailed images of the biliary tree, gallbladder, liver, pancreas, and pancreatic duct. Here are sample images of gallbladder stones in MRCP, key to weighted images in MRI and MRCP, identify any stones and are also the best tools for studying the common bowel duct, distal common bowel and its insertion into the duodenum. MRCP, this is an image showing five stones in the common bowel duct and this image, the bile in the duct appears white and the stones appear as dark filling defects. Case number three, a 55 year old male diabetic, heavy alcoholic beverage drinker who came in with chief complaints of bloatedness and weight loss. Ultrasound shows scan has long been the traditional mainstay for the clinical hepatic imaging because MR imaging displays the same lesion contrast enhancement pattern as MRI, but with superior lesion to liver contrast and for the hepatic masses, it is normal. But would you request for an ultrasound, CT scan, or an MRI? With ultrasound, the ability to differentiate an abscess from a neoplasm is limited as compared with the CT or MR. Ultrasound sensitivity for the diagnosis of liver abscess is only around 85%, while that of CT sensitivity is 97%. MRI diffusion weighted imaging ends with various imaging findings depending on the degree of maturation in internal content. CT scan will show a well defined low attenuation mass with enhancing peripheral rim. So, it's enhancing peripheral rim. MRI we present as a high point centrally in T1 and capsular enhancement in T1 with gadolinium. Okay, T1 weighted images which show double target sign or an isotope, hypo intense internal layer and hyper intense outer layer. For hepatocellular carcinoma, T1 weighted image for small lesions are often iso intense, larger lesions may be hyper intense. T2 weighted images most 
hepatocellular carcinoma are hyper-intense to hyper-intense. The fusion weighted images is helpful to differentiate hepatic abscess from malignant mimickers. So will you request for a CT scan or MRI? You may request for either. But also, you may do or opt for a bi biopsy of the lesion or the hepatic lesion. Okay. Physical examination revealed an essential normal abdomen, but the cardiac rhythm is irregularly irregular. The initial clinical impression is ischemic bowel disease, probably secondary from cardioembolism. So will you be requesting for a CT or an MRI? In acute mesenteric ischemia, MRI and MRA yield findings similar to those of CT. Despite of high sensitivity of MRI, which is 100%, and its specificity, specificity of 91% for these cases, MRI is not yet as practical as CT scan in setting of suspected acute mesenteric ischemia. So the last scenario that I will be discussing is case of 30-year-old male who came in for acute onset of epigastric pain that pierces the back. Your clinical impression in acute pancreatitis is acute pancreatitis. Laboratory findings show three times elevation of the serum, lipase, and amylase. Ultrasound shows no gallstones and abnormalities in the biliary tree. The visualized pancreas is also unremarkable. And what will be your next imaging study of CT scan is considered the gold standard in patients with acute pancreatitis. However, it exposes the patients to radiation. Still, you may do first with your contrast and CT scan. MRI may be an alternative when there is contraindication with your contrast and CT scan like allergies or renal insufficiency. MRI in acute pancreatitis, it is the diagnostic imaging method with no radiation hazard. With fewer contraindications on CT. Furthermore, MRCP has the unique capability of providing non-invasive images of pancreatic duct and biliary drugs if you want these structures to be evaluated as well. So in summary, in cases of ileus or intestinal obstruction, request for a plain abdominal x-ray, preferably with an upright or cross-table lateral view. Bowel obstruction may be further assessed by CT, scan for location, MR enterography for inflammatory bowel diseases, small bowel malignancies, post-operative attention. For gallbladder stones, or do MRCP if results are inconclusive, especially in evaluation of mild dots. For evaluation of liver masses, you may do ultrasound for preliminary evaluation. Mm -hmm. Triphasic CT scan and MRI may characterize masses better. For cases of pancreatitis, the visualization of pancreas may be limited in ultrasound due to its retroperitoneal is inconclusive. MRI is comparable with CT for the assessment of acute pancreatitis and is useful imaging for patients with other procedures that will be beneficial to our patients and will help us in our diagnosis as well as in confirmation of the 